Now, let's talk about short dipoles. We're going to talk about a half wavelength dipole versus a 1 100th wavelength dipole. The first question is how much more gain do you think the half wavelength dipole will have compared to the hundredth of a wavelength dipole? And what I'm going to do here is for a moment, I'm going to assume that it's completely lossless, that we managed to make it out of some kind of superconductor so that we don't have any, any loss. We're just talking about plain old radiation here. And the reason is that I, I'm going to emphasize how important it is to separate loss or efficiency from your uh, radiation effectiveness. You'll remember I said when you put 100 watts into an antenna, 100 watts is going to come out. So if we put 100 watts into a half wavelength dipole or 100 watts into a, a 1 100th wavelength dipole, we're going to get 100 watts out of each one. And if I can magically make them both 100% efficient, that is, it all comes out as radiation, we should expect the the, um, while we know that the amount of total amount of radiation is going to be the same from both of them. Now, another thing to think about is what kind of limits would this have? Now, if we had uh, just a, the half wavelength dipole, we know it's going to give us about 2.15 dB greater than the isotropic in free space. We'll do this in free space just to keep uh, gr the ground out of the picture as a confounding factor. And so the 0.01 wavelength dipole probably won't be more than that, although it might be. Uh, and how much less than that could it be? So the question, here's a, a, a thought experiment, and that is what is the minimum possible gain that a 100% efficient antenna could possibly have in free space? Does anybody know the answer to that one? That I, I think people can speak up here and, and say something. The answer is zero dBi, and here's why. If we have 100% efficiency, then we are radiating the same field, total field, as the isotropic. So let's start with an isotropic, and we squeeze it in a little bit. At some, we, we make it give it just a little more gain in some direction, and therefore it'll have a little less gain in some other direction. And if we, uh, so the, the met, if, if we consider the gain in the maximum direction of an antenna, it can't be any less than that of an isotropic. Because if it was, if it squeezed in compared to the isotropic, somewhere else it would bulge out. It would be greater in some direction. So the isotropic zero dBi is the minimum possible gain that you can have from a 100% efficient antenna, regardless of what kind it is. And so here's the answer to the question of a half wavelength versus 0.01 wavelength dipole. If they are 100% efficient, now here's something you can only do with modeling because you can't make a 100% efficient antenna, certainly not a 100% efficient uh, 100th wavelength dipole. But it's interesting to bring home the point that the difference in, in the effectiveness of a half wavelength and 0.01 wavelength dipole isn't because of any fundamental difference in the way they radiate. It's simply due to the fact that the 0.01 wavelength dipole isn't going to be very efficient, and I'll talk about efficiency in just a minute. The difference is a mere 0.42 dB, uh, 42 dB about 0 0.42 dB, less than a half a dB. And the reason that they're different at all is because the current distribution is a bit different on the short dipole. And therefore, its pattern is just a little bit fatter. The blue one is the, is the short antenna. And it's just a little bit fatter. And therefore, it's got a little bit less maximum gain here at the, at the uh, maximum. The current distribution on the dipole, as I mentioned before, is a piece of a sine wave. It looks like that. And if we put 100 watts into our dipole, we got 1.1 amps flowing. If we put 100 watts into our hundredth of a wavelength dipole, you notice we have more of a linear current distribution, and that's why the pattern is slightly different. But look at that. We've got 85 amps flowing in that guy. 
as opposed to about one amp in the half wavelength dipole. Now that's going to eat us alive for I squared R loss for starters. Um, your any resistance of the antenna wire itself is going to uh, end up giving you a lot of dissipation there. The other problem is that the feed point will have a huge amount of reactants, uh, capacitive reactants, and in order to cancel that out, we're going to have to make up a matching network, which is inevitably going to have to have an inductor in it, which has also got wire with huge amounts of current flowing in it. And between those, we end up with almost all of our 100 watts being dissipated as heat in either the antenna wire or the matching network. And that's why the easement resistance to be pretty small, pretty low too on that as well for those short dipoles. Pardon me? The radiation resistance is also going to be very slow on those dipoles. That's right. Uh, you can tell that by the fact that you've got the 85 amps flowing. That's uh, the, the radiation resistance. You have to match that, of course, and that's another job of your matching network, which is going to have some loss. And so, so we have to think about loss, but I encourage you to think of them separately from the problems of uh, getting gain by shaping the antenna. You lose gain by, uh, by having some of your power eaten up by resistance. And uh, uh, so here are some of the sources of them, your ground loss. Uh, anything that has a wire connect, one of the two terminals, the antenna is ground has to have current flowing through the ground that's equal to the current flowing into the antenna. So uh, current flowing through ground encounters I squared R loss, and that's what your radial ground systems uh, tend to mitigate, but uh, that can be considerable. Uh, if you have a low dipole, that induces current into the ground right underneath it, which uh, dissipates some of the power. And uh, uh, short antennas are particularly bad. They're ground mounted or connected to the ground because of their low radiation resistance. You end up with very high currents flowing in them for, this, for a given amount of power. Then your conductor loss, you've got skin effect, uh, which uh, reduces the effective area in which current flows. It goes, uh, the uh, area goes down as the frequency goes up. Steel wire is particularly bad because uh, if it's magnetic, um, the permeability of the wire causes the skin depth to be shallower. If you've got a permeability of 100, which is a very moderate amount, then the skin depth is one-tenth as thick as it otherwise would be, and therefore the wire has got 10 times the resistance at RF. Uh, I remember in QST a while back uh, reading an article about a guy who had come up with a really neat um, 80 meter uh, wide broadband dipole he was very proud of. And it was very broadband and the reason it was broadband is it was made out of uh, steel wire and uh, therefore it had an awful lot of loss. And that uh, adding loss just about always will increase your bandwidth. So here are some other ones. Uh, the feed line loss, um, the Having a high SWR on a feed line will increase its loss somewhat. It's uh, uh, often not a problem at HF, but if you have a very grossly uh, mismatched antenna that you're feeding with coax in particular, you can get uh, some serious losses. So we have efficiency here. Efficiency is simply the fraction of the applied power that ends up getting radiated as opposed to that which ends up getting lost as heat. So if you're at 100%, you are losing no power in, in heat. 50%, you're losing half of it, and uh, so forth. 